Is it possible to find family stories hidden in government forms? I was recently looking through some old homestead records and discovered that the answer is yes. This is my grandparents' second set of homestead records. When I got them, I found some surprises. So today I'm going to walk through those land records. Even if you are not a genealogy nerd and not totally interested in looking through old records in order to fill out your family tree, if you're interested in family stories, looking through some of these old documents is really worthwhile. Grandpa Bill sent his home through the Kincaid Act. I was looking for my grandparents' second homestead, so I started looking through the Atkinson graphic, and I found an article in 1912. He filed his final claim on August 27. This is a notice saying that he intends to file it. Here we go. Orland W. Carver of Phoenix, Nebraska, and it says that he made his initial claim on April 29th, 1907, so I'm going to assume that he moved there sometime soon after, and that on the 27th day of August 1912, he's intending to file his final paperwork to get his patent. So this tells me that there are homestead papers somewhere around. A lot of times I can find these on fold3.com, so I went looking here, and I already did a search for Orland Carver. And now here's my dad, Orland Carver Jr. This is a different Orland who lived in Kansas. And here's grandpa's homestead papers for his initial homestead, the one that we're not looking for. My dad, my dad. Everything here is my dad. No, nothing else about grandpa. I couldn't find the homestead application out here, so I went and ordered them from the National Archives. And this is what they look like. This looks pretty normal, but the first thing I see here is this leave of absence granted. Now, I had never even heard of a leave of absence before. I went and looked it up and found out, yes, it is possible to have a leave of absence from a homestead under certain circumstances. Here's where it says Kincaid. A Kincaid homestead was a homestead in Nebraska that could have been as much as 640 acres. Grandpa's homestead here was 600 acres. You had to have a pretty big homestead in the sand hills here in order to have enough land for the cattle to graze. And this is still your typical paperwork saying that, you know, I'm the head of the family, I'm a native citizen, and I don't have any other homesteads. Cost him $14 to file his initial claim in 1907. Now here is the letter saying that yes, your leave of absence for six months has been granted. This is October 13, 1909. All right, now this is him writing down why he needed that leave of absence. And what he says here is that my wife has been an invalid under the care of a physician for the past 22 months. So 22 months from October of 1909 would have been since December of 1907 which is three months before Sinabel was born. Her health is so low that her death was expected last week. She needs my constant care and attention. She's now at Butte Boyd County under the care of G.E. Darrow, M.D. And here's a letter from the doctor saying that, yes, indeed, Grandma is under his care. Crops are in, the cattle graze up late work in the land. A neighbor says he's never healed and grandpa breaks his hand. Now this, this is a claim jumper, Chris Greger, affidavit of contest. A claim jumper is somebody that would watch for a homestead that had been neglected for six months or longer. They would circle like a buzzard, just waiting to swoop in and grab the land. If this were a Monopoly game, they'd be the one that would steal your hotel while you were in the kitchen grabbing a snack. You know what I mean? So, Chris Greger, why are you circling Grandpa here? He says that Carver has failed to establish and maintain his residence on said land for more than six months last past. This was a July 10th. 1909. So he's saying grandpa hasn't been there for the last six months. More paperwork. More paperwork. I notice he is from a town about 20 miles north. So is he riding his horse down from Napier, Nebraska and just checking on the homestead every once in a while? And that's, I mean, that's a, quite a distance to be checking to see if a homestead is abandoned. So at any rate, it looks like Chris Greger didn't get to jump because Grandpa ended up with his land patent in the end. 
Here's another leave of absence for another five months because grandma is still sick. My wife is sick and needs the care of a nurse. And in this case, this is April of 1910. She would be pregnant with my dad at this point. This is to certify that she is in a very delicate condition, which is the wording they would use for pregnancy back then. And this leave of absence was granted. August 27, 1912, the very final paperwork. And here you see these same witness names that were listed in the newspaper article, Delbert and George Weirn. By the way, that's a father and a son. George later opened a car dealership in a nearby town. And here's a copy of that newspaper article. They had to actually put a copy of that newspaper notice in with their filing. Lamar sending seven kids, no time to decorate. Through every storm, hold their broom. Don't give up. So this is Grandpa. He's saying that he's got a wife and eight children. By this time, my father's born, so he's got seven children living with him, and then his oldest stepdaughter is living over in a nearby town with her family. So he, he talks about how they moved to Butte because of his wife's sickness and how they've been gone off and on, and it mentions that they moved to Verdell for three months. Verdell is sort of northeast of their homestead, a little ways away from Spencer. He raised potatoes and garden truck. It also says that he had other people's cattle grazing on his land, that he charged 15 cents per head per month during the years when he did that, that he himself had one cow and seven horses. Horses. He cut about 30 tons of hay in 1911. He's got a fence. Oh, he started out with one frame house, 13 by 32, and this house blew down in the fall of 1911. So he rebuilt a frame house, 16 by 18, two story, finished up in good shape. And this is the house that burned down on July 5, 1912. That's the house that I knew about. I didn't know about the one that blew down. Then he says that after the house burned down on July 5, 1912, he erected another house. Frame, 16 by 16, two-story, shingle, roof, sided, sealed on the inside, and a new barn, 20 by 24, 12 foot high to the eaves. This is the kind of information I've typically seen in other homestead records. Information from witnesses, and information on property, although usually you don't see a house having blown down and then another house burned down and then another house being built right before the property is sold. I guess Grandpa was pretty good at putting up quick houses by the end of this. Some witness statements. Witnesses are just saying, yes, he planted potatoes, yes, he had a house, yes, he had cows, and so on. Now here is one more application for leave of absence, and this is having to do with that Verdell that he was talking about. He's saying that he broke two bones in his right hand, and that leave of absence was granted, and this is a letter from his doctor. He fractured a metatarsal bone on his right hand. The hand has to be in plaster of Paris. It will be some time yet before it is safe for him to use the hand. I've also had under my care for the last two weeks Mrs. Carver, the wife, and she isn't in a fit condition either. So Grandma is still sick or she's sick again here. This is December of 1910. So that's three letters from three different doctors talking about Grandma being sick. And it sounds like she was sick starting in 1907, and she's still sick in very late 1910. Throughout that time, she has born two children. In just a couple of months after this, she's going to lose a child to measles. Right about this time, her daughter, Sina, has also come down with meningitis and is having to learn to walk all over again. These things all happen right about the same time. So she's, she's dealing with poor health, the loss of a child, and another child who is very sick all at the same time. And then a house that blew down, and then a house that burns down. Yeah, Grandma. Stress. The homesteading life would not be for me, I can tell you that. At any rate, these homestead papers are really interesting, and I hope you enjoyed going through them, and I hope you have better handwriting than this doctor. I'll talk with you again soon. Old records and forms Who gaps Story wrapped in A bureaucratic net Crops are in, the cattle grades up.
up late working the land. A neighbor says he's never here, and Grandpa breaks his hand. Grandma's sick, the doctor says her health is in my hands. When the house burns down, almost more than they can even stand. He built again. Come alive! Houses built faster than paint could drive. Old records and forged.